Two fighters, four months, one facility. ATC drivetrain has become an example of what can go wrong when you're working with damaged batteries or recalled batteries from electric vehicles. Is there a better way to keep these fires from happening? You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter and automotive engineer researching EV batteries since 2018. Not too long ago, ATC drivetrain in Holland, Michigan had their second battery related fire this year. And that's just the ones we know about. Oftentimes, smaller fires are handled internally by employees. ATC specializes in remanufacturing components for the automotive industry. In the past, their focus was on engines and transmissions, but with the shift to electric vehicles, they're now also rebuilding high voltage batteries. That means they're already working on packs that have something wrong with them which is a major hazard when it comes to lithium ion batteries. It's important work, don't get me wrong, but as we've seen, it comes with significant risks. Back on March 2025, a fire broke out at ATC's Waverly Road location just after three in the morning. That first incident involved crates storing lithium ion batteries. They did have a suppression system and the sprinklers kept the fire in check. The Holland Fire Department took care of the rest and the damage was limited. No injuries were reported and crews removed the burning batteries outside so they could safely burn off in a controlled way. Fast forward to July 9th, around 1 p.m., and ATC had another fire. This one was much bigger. Fire crews arrived to find multiple lithium ion batteries actively burning inside the warehouse. This time, the sprinkler system was struggling to keep the fire contained. Firefighters used fork trucks and other heavy equipment to drag those batteries out of the building so they could be extinguished in open air, realistically so they could burn outside instead of in the building. A lot safer situation. The response included more than a dozen fire departments from the area, plus a hazmat crew. Unfortunately, it was a very hot day and one firefighter was treated for heat exhaustion. Thankfully, there were no other injuries, but the damage is still being assessed. And it's clear that this incident could have been much worse if crews wouldn't have acted quickly to isolate those batteries. What I find interesting is the crews use forklifts from nearby businesses to remove the batteries from inside the building. Being a firefighter, it's an experience. You never know what equipment you might be operating or what situation you might be in. I've used both forklifts and scissor lifts during fires in industrial buildings. We've had people in our department climb into excavators, wearing air packs, of course, to tear apart structures. And yes, they were experienced operators, and I've been trained to use the equipment as well, just in my day-to-day -day operation for my standard job. It's just one of those situations where you need to be completely prepared to do something a little bit different. In this case, the suppression system did help save the building, but sprinklers alone aren't enough. Isolation and ventilation are critical when it comes to dealing with lithium ion battery fighters. Realistically, for a company working on damaged or recalled packs, there should be a dedicated area to quarantine those batteries and keep them separated from everything else. If the packs are stored in racks, there needs to be in-rack suppression designed specifically for battery fires. The building should also be equipped with a robust exhaust system to clear out those toxic and flammable gases that can build up when batteries fail. Without those safeguards, even a small incident can escalate into a large-scale fire in a matter of minutes. Even so, it was a long, exhausting operation, but local businesses, they stepped up to help. Applebee's, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, and the Ottawa County Canteen all provided food and drinks to keep the firefighters going and support rehab efforts. It's always great to see this kind of support, this kind of community backing when crews are out working in tough conditions. Realistically, any large-scale structure fire, it's nice to have that community support. Having two fires in less than four months at the same facility does raise serious questions. And I'm even more concerned after seeing photos from the inside of this facility. These are actually user-submitted photos on Google Maps showing how these batteries are stored. The state of charge, that also makes a big difference. Realistically, these should be stored at a low state of charge. These aren't small concerns. They highlight the reality that battery remanufacturing, when it's not tightly controlled, it can present hazards on par with any industrial processing involving flammable or combustible materials. And unless there's a shift in how these risks are managed, it's only a matter of time before the next incident. So that's where things currently stand. Two serious fires in just a few months, both linked to the challenges of handling damaged lithium ion batteries. As more companies start to work on electric vehicle components, these risks, they're not going to go away. They're just going to grow. If there's one lesson here, it's that suppression systems, isolation, and ventilation, they're not optional. They are essential.